Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We're going to aim to get the low ride pumpkin rolling this week. The electronics might be a bit of a mashup as not everything's arrived, but we should be able to get it pretty close to running. Right, off we go then. Bag C, step 21. The rather obnoxious fake dampers. They're pretty awful, but they're going to get us going for now. We need a bunch of plastic bits. C15, C7, C6, C5 and C12. And then there's the two gold springs. Okay, a quick build these. Take the body and insert C15, the cap, in the top. Pop in the C7 clip and slide C6, the washer, over the end. Next is the spring, followed by the bottom bit. Pop it in and twist 90 degrees to lock it. And there we go. They won't win any races, but they'll hold the chassis off the ground. Step 22. Fitting the fake dampers. Now, if you're fitting oil dampers right away, and you're not using the M chassis damper kit from Tamiya, you'll have to come up with your own mix of screws and spacers to get everything to fit nicely. Anyway, we need four of the black self-tap shoulder screws, and two B8 spacers. Start at the bottom, we need one of the screws through the hole, and a spacer over the threads. And we can attach it to the hole in the lower arm. If you do the top mounting first, you can't get the arm to go low enough to clear the chassis for the screwdriver. The top mount just needs one of the screws. The plastic is fairly hard, so it can be tough going to get it in. Take your time and be careful not to slip. When both the fake dampers are on, we have a nice bouncy rear suspension. Nice. Step 23. Building up the front fake dampers. They're exactly the same as the rear ones, just with silver springs. Like so. Step 24. Fitting the front fake dampers. For the screws, we need two longer silver self-tap shoulder screws and two more of the black ones. Fitting them is pretty much the same as the rear ones, just a different set of spacers. Two F4s and two F5s. Right, silver screw through the bottom hole, a large spacer, F5, then screw it into the bottom arm. Can't get any easier. And the top, we get a black screw and a small spacer. Just like the rear, the plastic is quite hard, so be careful getting the screw done up. The suspension seems to work quite well. I should imagine it would be very smooth with a proper set of dampers. Okay, step 25. Time to fit the snow shovel. We need four 15mm self-tappers and two 12mm self-tappers. The bumper fits to the bottom of the chassis. With a bit of a wiggle, it will drop in very nicely. The four rear holes get 15mm self-tappers. For best results, do them up in a cross pattern so they all seat themselves nicely. On the top at the front, the two 12mm screws go in. And that's about it. Seems like there's going to be a lot of short steps in this video. OK, step 26, setting up the servo. Not surprisingly, we need the servo. Standard size, something like a Futaba S3003 would probably be ideal. We don't need much torque, plastic gears will be just fine too. For now though, we're going to use this rather torquey metal gear servo. We need a boss for the servo saver. Which one you choose depends on the servo spline. This one has the same splines as a Futaba servo. Basically, if it fits, it fits. We also need the spring and the plastic washer from the P tree. And the last bit of plastic, there's the arm from the A tree A3. The kit comes with a few screws to attach the servo arm. The screws that come with the servo are usually a bit short for the servo saver. Try the screws until you find one that fits. Generally, metal gear servos use the machine screws, and the plastic gears the self-tappers. To set up the arm angle, we need the servo to be centred. You can rig up all your radio gear and make sure the trims are zeroed, or if you have a servo saver, you can just connect it up and set it to 1500 microseconds. While it's still powered, fit the boss as close to the 15 degrees in the manual as you can. The little lump ends up opposite the arm. Next, the spring goes on. Pop it over the boss with the split over the lump. To make it easier, you can use a small flat blade driver to open up the spring. Next, the arm goes on, followed by the plastic washer. Last bit, fit a screw. And that's the servo all done and ready to fit. Step 27, fitting the servo. The plastic we'll be needing is A1 and A5, the mounts, and B5, the radio tray. And for screws, two 18mm self-tappers, two M3x6s, four 10mm self-tappers, and four washers. 
First we need to fit A5 to the lugs furthest from the servo saver. This servo has open sided holes for the mounts, so we can loosely fit the screws to the mount and clip it in place. On a Futaba servo the holes are complete, so they can be a bit more fiddly to fit. The holes are usually quite big, so when you're nipping up the screws, make sure the mounts are nicely centred on the lugs. Run the servo lead through the holes in the chassis and pop the servo in place. Make sure the wire is running neatly around the servo and isn't trapped under it. A bit of a faff, but it's got to be neat for everything to fit properly. Install the 10mm screws in the mount, very loosely, just to stop the servo from falling out. Next, insert A1 under the lug and install the 15mm self-tappers and washers. Do them up a bit at a time and check on the wiring as you go. On the other side of the chassis, line up the radio tray with its holes and fit the two M3x6s. There's not a lot of thread on these, so be careful not to strip the plastic. Battery holder now, step 28. We of course need the holder, B7, the two mount screws, they have a hole through the top for a body clip, and we will be needing some spacers, B10 and B12. In the back right corner we can fit a mount screw with a thin spacer. The hole needs to end up running front to back for the clip to fit. The other mount screw goes in the front left with a thick spacer, and its hole goes front to back as well. The mount just drops in, there's a transponder mount too, but there's not much point in fitting it unless you're racing at a track with a timing setup. Oddly, the steering rod gets clipped to the servo in this step too. You'd have thought that would have been fitted with the servo. The only other bit would be the metal tape to hold the servo wire flat. But since I'm probably going to be changing the servo soon, I think I'm going to wait. Step 29. Electronics. We need an ESC, a receiver, a bit of antenna tube, and some double-sided foam tape. This will be a temporary install until my nice posh silicon insulated wire turns up. I'll do another video of the final bits and bobs when I have all the bits. Essentially what we need to do is try and get everything to fit very neatly. So the wiring ends up being tidy, everything reaches and nothing can get caught up in moving parts. Fiddle around until you've got a nice layout and then stick it all down with some tape. This install is a bit of a rat's nest, but once the motor wires are replaced and the servo wires are neatly tucked away, it'll be just fine. I really wanted to do it all in this video, but getting stuff shipped at Christmas can be a bit of a pain. OK, wheels and tyres. Step 30. In this kit we get a pair of regular compound M chassis tyres and a pair of the lovely soft S-grips. They'll help stop the truck spinning out, but I reckon they're not going to last very long. The wheels are ever so shiny. When you clip them from the tree, make sure you trim all the remaining nubs off or they'll get caught on the foams. Right, the foams Tamiya supply are in strips which makes them a little bit tricky to properly install. They need to go in with the ends not overlapping. Don't be tempted to trim them down. They will go in, they just need some persuasion. Install them the best you can and gently stretch the tyre and foam, rotating them a little bit each time. Usually after a few stretches the foam will settle into position. Next, the tyre gets fitted to the wheel. We have a bit of a choice. Most of the Tamiya tyres only have text in boss on one side, so you can choose a blank sidewall or the one with the Tamiya logo. Stretch the tyre over the wheel, being careful not to disturb the foam. Work the tyres until the bead is nicely seated. It might take a little bit of massaging to get it all down. Just keep working it until it's perfect. Now would be a good time to glue the tyres, but I think I'm going to leave that for the final preparation video. OK, step 31, making it a roller. Right, we need four D3s, the wheel hexes, four drive pins, the last two bearings, and four wheel nuts. At the front we need to remove the body clip we fitted earlier, replacing it with a drive pin. It's a loose fit, so be careful you don't lose it. Follow the pin with one of the wheel hexes. You can just about get to the inside of the stub axle to stop it spinning, which does make it that bit easier. Next, a wheel goes on, and a wheel nut. It needs to be fairly tight. The nut will squeeze the hex onto the pin, which needs a little bit of force to do. And tightening it, you will feel it suddenly get very stiff. That's when to stop. At the rear, we need to install a bearing, which you can do very easily by hand. Then a drive pin, a hex, a wheel with an S-grip tyre, and of course, a wheel nut. When all four are fitted, we have a rolling chassis complete with the bouncy suspension. Great stuff. 
I suppose we really should do the last couple of steps on the chassis before we finish. So, step 32, front body mounts. We need two C1 body posts, two 10mm self-tappers and two body clips. There's really not much to this. The posts fit over some square bits just behind the top of the fake dampers. Pop a screw in, offer it up and tighten up the screw. Repeat on the other side, which just leaves the body clips that go in on the fourth hole from the top. We'll probably end up with some foam between the clips and the body, so we might need to adjust them later, but that won't be a problem. Right, step 33. Not surprisingly, the rear body mounts. This time we need two E3s, along with the same 10mm self-tappers and a couple of body clips. They fit just the same way as the front ones, the only niggle is the tyre gets in the way a bit. It might have been a bit easier to fit the mounts before the wheels, but I guess the guy writing the manual was late for his dinner and didn't want to refactor it. The clips go in the bottom most holes, which other than fitting the battery in step 34, which we're going to skip for now, means we've essentially finished the chassis. Next time we'll be working on the body. Actually, no, I can't resist it. It has to be done. Yeah, perfect fit. Not that anybody would expect anything else from a Tamiya kit. Very nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. By all means, do the like and subscribe thing. It's always much appreciated. So until next time, bye guys. Bye.